Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to move a transform in a different way than instead of looking at and moving by manipulating the position. Instead, we're going to use transform that translate function. So, but first, I'm going to comment these lines and now use this transform that translate. Now, in transform that translate, you don't really have to rotate towards that object. The object will just translate in the 3D space towards that uh, target. But how can I tell uh, in, 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 in the language in C sharp that it should go towards that direction? The translate function moves the transform in the direction of the distance of a translation and it takes a vector 3. Now let's talk about the directions. I have two objects. Let's say object A is here. Oops, one second. Let's change things. Let's open a new one. So I have my object transform A here and a transform B here and I want to get the direction from A to B and the way to do this is this is the direction and how can you express this direction it you express it by B minus A the B minus A vector will give you this direction. So in, in, in the other case where we were working in Unity, this is actually the transform form dot position and this one is the target object target. You get the idea. Um, and these both have a x, y, and, and z values. And same for this x, y, and z. Now when you actually um, subtract a's position, which is a vector 3, from b's position, then you will get the direction. right? So let's go back and tell unity to move towards that direction. So it's going to be target object that position minus transform that position. And let's multiply that with time that delta time to make it smoother. And let's see how this works. Now you see the cube is moving, but one thing that you'll notice, it kind of starts to slow down as it approaches to the sphere. Now if you want to create an easing effect, that's, that's good, you can use that way. But if you want to get rid of that, uh, I'm going to explain how you can do it. The reason that is happening is because as A gets closer to B, this vector is getting smaller and therefore the, the the velocity is getting smaller so what you can do is you can actually divide this by the distance to the target and then you will actually have a constant um, non-changing velocity so let's see this too slow let's uh, multiply with movement speed okay and we can change the movement speed if we need to when now it's five now as you can see the speed is constant it's not changing okay that's use that's the use of translate function now I'm going to show you guys one more thing in this video. What if you want to have your object go through a series of 
waypoints. Now I want it to go here, there, there, and there. You need to be able to switch targets. So I'm going to use a transform array, public transform um, waypoints. Let's call this waypoints. Okay. The the way I make it an array, I put square brackets here and I also need a integer waypoint index to keep the index of the current waypoint. Now at the beginning we start and the first target is going to be the first waypoint. So the target object will be waypoints and VP index. And then um, I will do this. So let's uncomment these and comment these. I'm going to be using translate function. So this transform will always move towards the target object. Uh, we're not going to change that, but we're going to change the target object. So every time the distance becomes zero, and let's say else, so it, if it's less than zero, then we're going to increase the waypoint index. Index will be plus plus, and we will see if waypoint index it gets bigger than the waypoints number of waypoints, then we will make it zero. So it will go back to the beginning, right? It's going to kind of um, go back to the first waypoint. And the target, distance target, is always going to be one of the waypoints. So let's see how this is going to work out. Now, when we come back to the editor, you'll see that we have a new array. And I'm going to make the size of the array 4. And I'm going to add all these waypoints 3. And then let's run it. Okay, there's a problem. Let's make the distance bigger than one. And let's debug this. So the cube is going to the first one. And then when he gets there, index is one, index two, three, four. Uh, we made one simple mistake, which crashed Unity. But anyways, I know what the problem is there. The problem is here uh, we needed to put a minus in order to fix the mistake that actually crashed the uh, editor so we're gonna just put a minus one here and another thing I did is I added a debug.log line here to just print out the index so you can actually keep track of what's going on with the index and the target object will always be assigned to a new waypoint so if we run this, let's see. As you can see, the cube goes first, second, third, fourth, and then index becomes zero. Goes to one, two, three, four. Um, you know, you can add, this is a very basic way, way to make an object follow waypoints. From this point on, you can keep adding more things and make a lot more sophisticated outcomes.